Well, good morning, everyone. It is so great to see you all. I was mentioning to somebody, uh, Jack and I decided we'd hang out on the patio as people were coming in and we were saying hello and greeting people. And then I came in and there's like twice as many of you. Do you all come in the back door? I did not see, I mean, all of a sudden there's this gigantic choir behind me and it's just great. It is so good to be gathered together as the people of God, uh, the people at La Mesa First United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Christian Dement, your pastor and a pastor in the neighborhood, and it is a blessing to gather together this morning. I want to start worship a little bit differently than we normally do. I think it's important to begin with understanding the what and the why of what we're doing on a Sunday morning. We gather I assume because we all have a hunch, a hunch that life with God is better than life without God. I'm going to help you out. Would, Carol, can I help you get in a spot? <laughs> the best seat possible. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So a hunch. A hunch that, that there is a common belief that life with God is just better than life without God, right? And that life with relation, in relationship with others is better than life without relationship with others. So we gather together to have an experience of God with people who have the same hunch, who we have building relationships with, whether it's been long-term relationships or brand new ones, and being called together to give our best to God, and to one another. That's what we do on Sunday morning. That's what we do. We come with that hunch and we seek to have an experience of God so that we can be reminded that life with God is better than life without God, right? Now, there's another piece to all of this is none of us are perfect, me included. And so we're just authentic and genuine with the way that we worship together and we give our best no matter what and, and we don't hold back, because nobody's judging. I hope nobody's judging how we worship together. So I want to start with this. There is a sign out in front of our church that says this, that this is a church, a place to be loved and a place to belong. And I really believe that that is what we live out each and every day, not just on Sunday morning. So I want to begin here. I'm going to say you belong and you all say, I belong. And then I will say, you are loved, and you will say, I am loved. Can you do that? You belong. I belong. You are loved. I am loved. I also want you to re uh, repeat after me. God is great. Here and now. Here and now. God is great. Let us worship a God that loves us and calls us to belong with one another and belong with him. Amen? Amen. Amen.
can applaud that. Paul, thank you so much for that great prelude. I think that will be my new alarm ringtone for the mornings. It would be a nice way to wake up every morning. Let us wake one another up. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able. Turn to one another. Greet one another. Those who are at home, write a hello in the chat. Let us know that you're with us. It is great to be gathered. Yes. I was just checking in with the people who are worshiping at home, uh, and it's so great to see so many there from uh, near and far. Um, I was checking to see if my parents were there. They're in Hawaii right now, but um, it doesn't look like they woke up early to come to church. <laughs> they're going to watch it recorded, and I know they're going to hear me giving them a hard time. So, Mom and Dad, I hope you're safe and having a good time. It is great to be gathered together. We, today we continue our six-week sermon series, Holy Ground, and our efforts through these six weeks is to connect more deeply to creation that will then lead us to activities that claim our call to be caretakers of all that God has created. We began with our call to be stewards of creation on this Sunday after Easter, and then last Sunday we focused on Holy Ground we talked about how this ground that we step on connects us with all who have come before us, all that are presently with us here on earth, and all who will come in the future. And the cool part is reminding ourselves that includes Jesus who walked on this earth. We are connected in that way. How did you do with your homework assignment, by the way? Did anybody take your shoes off and stand? And I see people shaking their heads just to feel that connection with the ground, whether it's in the sand or the dirt, the soil, or even the concrete, reminding us that we are connected with one another. And today, if you didn't pick up the theme, we're talking about some water and things that we love. And be thinking of your favorite body of water, the favorite thing that you love to do in the water, and how much we need to care for our water, right? And so that will be our focus this morning. So as we continue in worship, uh, let us stand and sing together this opening hymn, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. The words are in your bulletin. Please stand as you're able and let us sing.
and spend a moment right up here with me on the chancel steps. Good morning, good morning. Before, before you sit down, actually come right on up here. Right on. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, obviously, you all already heard that we have a theme. The theme is, is what is in that vase that Jack almost put his hand in. What is in there? Water. Absolutely. So I brought onto this altar some of my favorite things to do in water. Maybe it'll inspire you to think about your favorite things. What do you see that, that maybe I like to do in water? Anyone? Anyone? What is this? Surfboard. Is it a surfboard? Hmm? Ooh, maybe you guys haven't seen this. It's a wakeboard, right? So this is something you strap onto your feet, you get behind a boat in a river or a lake, and you surf behind the wake of a, of a, um, of a boat, and it's called a wakeboard. We'll have to get you familiar with that, Liam. Maybe we can get you behind a boat. I love that. Uh, what other things do you see? Yes, Jack. Uh, you like to fix your house? Oh, yes, yes. I like to fix our house and, and, and pay attention to the water. I'm going to lift that up later on in service. But this piece of equipment here is a unique piece of equipment for our house to, to keep track of how much water we use. Absolutely. Other things? Fishing. Going fishing, surfing. going surfing, or, or what's over here, way over here? Boogie boarding, absolutely, or just, what do you have in the backyard? A pool, right? So I've got my swim trunks hanging out by the pool, hanging out by, by a body of water. Those are some of the things I love to do in water. Do you guys want to come and sit uh, on the chancel steps here? And, and I've got just a little bit more. I want you guys to be thinking about water and how much we love water. And we've had a unique experience with water this winter and even into the beginning of spring. Can I sit next to you, Gavin? Does that work? Excellent. We've had a lot of rain, and one of the things that is fun, what, what do you like to do in the rain? Play in the rain? Puddles. Jump in puddles? Oh, go, being inside when it's raining so you can play video games. Yes, I hear that. Maybe catching droplets on your tongue. I saw a baseball player doing that in the dugout when it was starting to rain at one of the baseball games. So... I'm going to have you guys think about rain, and we've done this before, and congregation, will you help me? Let us create a rainstorm once again, so that we're kind of putting ourselves in the midst of, of God's creation, of God's water, of God's rain. Are you ready? Okay, you have to be silent. Shh. This is the silence before the storm, and we want the wind to come in, so just rub your hands together. And then we hear the little droplets of water starting to land on the roof and the windows and the windshield. And the, way, and the wind brings in the clouds and more rain, and so it makes more of a sound. And then it gets louder. And then the thunder comes. Ooh, hear that? Are you guys doing it with us? You can do it with us. And then the wind blows the storm, and it gets calmer and calmer and calmer. Until it's quiet. How cool is that? to experience a storm, we can do it right here inside of our sanctuary, and we don't even need to play video games. We can bring the water inside, right? Yeah. How fun is that? And to imagine ourselves surrounded by God's waters. And you know, oftentimes when we do baptism, we talk about all the things that, that water symbolizes. It symbolizes life. It gives us life. It nurtures us. It makes, makes things grow out of the soil. It, it cleanses us. We take showers and baths to clean up. It is the thing that gives us life. Without water, we could not have life. And so it's so important to take care of it. And especially where we live, in this kind of deserty climate, we need to make sure that we preserve it and are wise in using it, right? And this is a way that we do what God calls us to do, which is to care for life, to care for creation. 
and to care for one another. So this idea of taking care of the earth, taking care of the soil, and taking care of the water, and taking care of the sky isn't just about, about us, but it's about God and caring for God's creation and doing as God calls us to love one another, to love God, and to love ourselves. Can you guys do one more thing for me? Would you stand? I'm going to take a risk. I was inspired this morning. We're all going to sing a song, so you guys can sing it with us. And many of you guys know it, especially if you went to camp. It is Peace Like a River. Do you guys know this song? Okay, you, you're, you're crowding me here. All right, here we go. Do you guys know Peace Like a River? Oh, that was a very, that was a no, I guess. It goes like this. It goes, I've got peace like a river. So what, what do you do when you want to show the sign of peace? Peace. And what does a river look like? Like this, right? So when we sing, I've got peace like a river, you go, peace like a river. And then the next verse is, I've got joy like a fountain. Look like a fountain. You guys can do it too if you want to. Joy like a fountain, because I've got to play guitar. I can't do this for you. And then I've got love, like a big hug, like an ocean. All right? Love like an ocean. Peace like a river, joy like a fountain, love like an ocean. You guys can do that? Can you guys help them by, um, you memorized all that, right? Okay, it goes something like this. <clears throat> I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul, in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I forgot the soul part. You just point at the bottom of your shoe. Good job. You guys reminded me. Ready? This is Joy Like a Fountain. Ready? Joy? I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul, in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Are you guys ready? It goes, peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean, with the hand motions. And fast, ready? I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean in my soul, in my soul. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean in my soul. Woo! I've got too many things going on for children's moment. Maybe this will be all that we do this morning. I want you to also to, to, to notice there's something around us. Do you guys see something that is all around us? Surfboards. Surfboards. You know, I see four of them right here. Could, you, could each of you guys go to, don't knock them over, but each of you just go over to one of them, like one of those two, one of this one, one over here. Yeah, you could go wherever you want, to any of the surfboards. That's totally fine. Totally fine. I just want to share something that is a really great joy. I got into a conversation with Zach's dad. So Amy is our Children's Center director. And Amy, you just get announced as, Zach, you're Amy's husband, right? <laughs> they just got married a few weeks ago, last month. And, um, and I met Zach's dad, David. And he was talking about surfing, and I was talking about surfing, and how much I love surfing, and how much he loves surfing, and how much we want to share that with others and the next generation. You know what he did? He went out and bought all of these surfboards for us to teach these kids. I'm going to cry. <clears throat> now, this doesn't come without a plan. You just may not know that you're part of the plan. John, Brent, Cody, uh, 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 
Doug Riddle, who's here on a regular basis, those of you guys who know how to surf, and Catherine Peterson, who's going to be our youth, youth activities director, we're going to go out and teach these kids how to surf over the summer at the Days at the Beach. John, Brent, <laughs> Cody. I'll let you know what dates and times, but let's do that, because this will be fun. So can you just kind of put your hands on a, on a surfboard without knocking it over or towards a surfboard, those of you here, and let us do a blessing of the boards and these children and the waters. So let us be in prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the generosity of David, for hearing a call of something that he loves that connects him with God and God's creation, and then passing it forward to a whole next generation who can love the oceans just as much as he does and many of us do. So God bless these boards as they become a symbol not only of fun and joy, but of care for the earth and care for creation, friends. And bless the children who will learn how to surf and bless those who give of their time to help them learn. Surround them in your care and safety and love. And may this be an opportunity for us to learn how to love you more as we love one another and love the waters in which you have created. So bless these boards, bless these children, and bless this ministry, and bless David for the generous, generosity of his heart. Can the people of God say amen? Amen. 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 Whoo! Y'all can... Yes. You already know, well, then maybe you can help teach, right? That's how we pass it forward. Miss, Miss Elvia is ready to take y'all. Are you ready? So you all can go to Sunday school, and God bless you today and every day. Amen. I forgot what was next. <laughs> As we prepare to hear this anthem that continues us in our theme and in our worship, uh, I do want to remind us as we're inspired by our children that uh, you can check out our e-newsletter for um, information about camps and retreats and Vacation Bible School, um, and all of those who are gathering today to talk about leading Vacation Bible School, our care for our children and this children's ministry. And I also want to pray Thanksgiving for Liam, who's, oh gosh, I got him to leave too quickly. Liam and Bill, we want to pray for them as they are going to go to family camp next weekend, the district-wide family camp up at Camp Cedar Glen. So um, we want to pray blessings upon them as they go and do that um, and represent our church as a family. And so we pray for them. Let us continue to be in worship.
Thank you, Michael and choir, so beautiful. It is a great way to prepare our hearts for a time of prayer. And as we begin this time of prayer together, I want to remind you all that it is a gift to have a caring ministry team that keeps track of our prayers and sends them out every week for those who receive them. If you'd like to receive the, the prayer, um, prayer list for each week for members of our church and beyond, um, indicate that on your attendance card. We'd be happy to, sh- to, to um, add you to our uh, distribution list. You get it in the email. But also, our, we like to call them our prayer companions, those who are here intentionally to be praying for you and with you. And so on the, fi- on the last Sunday of every month, they have red table, uh, tables with red tablecloths out on the patio, uh, and they are present there. So after worship, if you have uh, a need to pray or just to chat with somebody, um, uh, to have somebody who is there to intentionally listen um, uh, and to pray with you, I invite you to go and, and meet with them or just say thank you for their prayers. Um, uh, meet uh, those who are on the caring ministry team, maybe you're interested in being a part of that um, and let them know that. So when you go out and you see those red tables, know that that is our caring ministry prayer companions who are there for you. Um, <clears throat> we, we begin with a word of prayer for two of our uh, congregations connected with us in the United Methodist Church through our district and one that is connected to us in a very direct way in that uh, we pray today for Vista United Methodist Church. And those of you who know the pastor at Vista United Methodist this church is Reverend Leanne Shaw, who used to be here, and who Donna, our, the person in charge of our caring ministries, daughter. Um, and so we pray, let her know that we prayed for her this morning, lifting her up in prayer, along with Frank Halleck, who um, is an associate pastor there and, and also helps with music. I also want to lift up Wesley United Methodist Church. That is where um, Cheryl uh, uh, Regan is, is oftentimes away and leading at, but also the pastors there, uh, Kung Huin and Tone Lei. We want to pray for them and for Cheryl. And of course, always our Viet, uh, uh, missionaries to Vietnam, Jonathan and Tara Park. Some celebrations to lift up this morning uh, that we're prayerfully thankful for is all of those who gathered together at Fresh Start yesterday. Um, 50 People were served, our neighbors in need, and and I give thanks for those who hosted that Fresh Start experience as we continue to build relationships with our neighbors and care for them in the many ways that we can. Um, Also, uh, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, um, and so we're celebrating that at our Children's Center, and so um, we want to be in prayer for Amy and for uh, her uh, 13-plus employees, uh, a part of our church, who uh, we want to pray for as they are here Monday through Friday caring for so many children and the families of those children. Uh, So we want to pray for them as well as all teachers um, uh, throughout not only our community but throughout the globe who give of their time to care for our children. Along with that, it was really fun. Uh, last night, La Mesa Arts Academy gathered together for their um, annual fundraiser, and it was a delight to go to it and find Stephanie singing 80s rock tunes with um, the rest of the staff. You, you need to get out in the community and see those of us who are doing things. Stephanie doesn't just sing holy music. She sings Rock Lobster by the B-52s. And so... Um, I'm thankful for her and for all of the teachers who volunteered and put that together. It was a great celebration of community together. Um, Also, I just want to celebrate those who are participating in VBS. If you're interested in being a part of that, that volunteer staff, whether it's just to come for an hour, a day, or all five days um, in the summer for our children, we will be gathering after church today in the social hall to just give a a, a real quick overview of what's going on and and how we can uh, get people involved. So if you're interested and you've never done it or if you've done it before, please come back and let us do this work together. Finally, on the the prayers of joy side, um, uh, I have been informed throughout since Easter and, and beyond that I now have a list of 12 to 20 people who would like to join the church. That is an increase of 10% of our congregation, and that that is a great joy, so something to celebrate. So what better day to celebrate um, uh, new members but on Pentecost, uh, and so that will be May 28th. So if you are interested in becoming a member and you've shared that with me, I'm sharing with you the date. But also, if maybe you're thinking about it and haven't communicated that, please let me know. I would love to add you to that wonderful list of those who um, will be a part of new membership in the church. We do have some prayers uh, in our community that we want to lift up. Uh, Ted Dougherty, who uh, is not with us this morning, he he just wrote a prayer uh, last week 
to just pray for and support and care for his entire family. So we want to be in prayer for Ted and his family. We want to pray for Linda Mucka. She had some health issues this weekend, is at home resting and recovering. And so we want to surround her in our love and care. I'm I can almost guarantee that somehow she's watching online. She doesn't miss many Sundays. And so um, we are praying for you, Linda, and pray uh, God's love surrounds you and that we surround you in this time of healing and and, um, pray for strength. Jen B., who is a worshiper online, she lifts up prayers for support and healing for a friend who is a combat military veteran. We pray um, for that friend, um, for her strength or his strength, um, and for, uh, for love uh, surrounding them. Also, Susan, we want to pray for Susan Powell. Dale Powell is worshiping online, and she lifted up that... Uh, After her surgery this past week, her daughter Susan's, she's doing very well. And so we want to continue to pray for uh, recovery and health for her. Uh, Nancy Hollowell, who is also online, lifted up uh, a concern that strep is going through her family. And so thankfully, they decided not to be here. Um, We want to pray health and healing, Nancy, for you and your family. And before us are some prayers as well. Uh, Carolyn Weitzel lifts up prayers for a friend, Cindy, um, who starts chemotherapy on Tuesday for a rare and serious cancer. Oh, there you are. Um, and so we want to pray for healing and God's grace and peace in this very difficult situation. So pray for Cindy. For, um, from Linda and Ralph, Lacey Alfaro, we pray for um, uh, them in the sudden passing of her husband, Eric. And so we want to pray peace in this time of grief and mourning for Lacey and all who who are grieving that loss today. We lift up um, from Charlene, the Gallardo family in New York, um, prayers for peace after the sudden passing of cousin Carlito. And so we want to pray for uh, the family in that loss. Um, He was only 58, and so we pray, um, taken too soon, and we we pray comfort and peace. And I... oh. Did that one already, and I'm going to conclude here with uh, a prayer of joy. Uh, Ruby lifts up. We've been praying for uh, her grandchild, great-grandchild, grandchild, grandchild, Grandchild. Um, Trooper. Uh, We've been praying for him. He received a prayer quilt. Uh, He is doing better. He still has a tracheotomy, um, uh, but is doing um, schooling from home, and uh, so we need to continue to pray for him, but uh, pray Thanksgiving that he is getting better as things go along. And finally, lots of prayers. Um, We're focused on the waters. And we want to pray for the bodies of water near us, all of those that have brought us joy. Maybe think of Lake Murray or Lake Jennings or Choyas Lake, the San Diego River, the Pacific Ocean, all of the waters of this globe. Let us pray forgiveness and seek repentance for our sins of pollution, overuse, misuse, things that have damaged the waters of creation. And let us, as we go into prayer, consider how we can live out our baptismal call to be caring and advocating for all of God's creation, including our waters. Let us take time in silence together, lifting these and those that are on our hearts. Let us pray. Creator of all, we can feel life happening all around us. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for creating us a part of a planet that sustains our lives and for entrusting this sacred gift to our care. Help us in our various roles to be good stewards of all that you have made, from humanity all the way out through all of your creation. Unite us who dwell on this earth as your beloved creatures that we might share your gifts 
and mutually thrive together. Open us to your wisdom, not just here, but in every bird song, every dancing leaf, and every flowing wave. May we see you everywhere we look, and may we follow the ways of Christ, living in communion with all of your creation. And so in that spirit, we are called to gather our voices as one in sharing the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us take time now to consider the gifts God has given us and respond with generosity at, in this time of offering. We invite the ushers to come forward to receive our offering. You may also give online on our website here at home, or you may use a QR code in your bulletin. after the first verse. join me in prayer. Creator God, we thank you for blessing us with the great earth that provides everything we need. Thank you for your abundant gifts that we are able to return some of them to you. Bless all that we bring before you today. Use our tithes and offering to continue your work in our world. Bless the gifts you've played inside each one of us that we might be the people you need us to be. Help us to be good stewards of all you've entrusted to our care and continue to send resources of our world here through us that we might do more good in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this uh, theme today of water is not unusual for us. There are uh, themes that continue to come before us, symbols that continue to come before us, both in Scripture and our spirit-filled lives. Creation, light, bread, 
and water. Today, we return to the waters. As I mentioned with the kids, waters symbolize baptism and rebirth, healing and renewal, creation and order out of chaos. It ebbs and flows, waves and ripples. It's a living and moving thing. It sustains us and life on earth. It cleanses us and makes us new. In the Bible, we hear of water often. Straight from the very beginning in the first chapter of the first book of our Bible, we hear how God created order from the chaos and water was a part of it. We then read also about Noah's Ark and the waters that covered the earth and and Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea on their way to the promised land. In the New Testament, we hear of water remembering Jesus' birth, the blind man regaining his sight and the Samaritan woman at the well. We hear of Jesus turning water into wine, walking on water and calming the storms. And we remember the night that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. All of these stories remind us that God offers us living water, that God is our source of life. We are created and born through the waters, reborn through baptism, healed and renewed through cleansing floods of God's grace, and recreated from the inside out as God brings order from chaos. So here are just two of the stories of our scriptures, one from the Hebrew text and one uh, from our New Testament of water, bringing chaos into order and bringing life to all. Both of our scriptures this morning are found in the message. The first one is Genesis 1, 1 through 10. First this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke. Light, and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. They named the light day and the dark night. It was evening. It was morning. Day one. God spoke. Sky in the middle of the waters separate water from water. God made sky. They separated water under sky from the water above sky, and there it was. God named sky the heavens. It was evening. It was morning. Day two, God spoke, separate, water beneath heaven, gather into one place, land, appear, and there it was. God named the land earth, they named the pooled water ocean. God saw that it was good. Our second one is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to the forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, and they confessed their sins, were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locust and wild field honey. As he preached, he said, The real action comes next. The star in this drama, to whom I'm just a mere stagehand, will change your life. I am baptizing you in the river, turning your old life into a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's Spirit, looking like a dove, come down upon him. Along with the Spirit, a voice. You are my son. 
chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, so we just heard a part of the story that is symbolized in that, in that stained glass window all the way to the very end on this side where you see that six-pointed star that represents the six days of creation, right? We heard of one, day one, day two, and part of day three because more happened on day three, but that would have been a longer scripture reading for Karen there. We just heard that God gives birth to creation by bringing shape and order out of watery chaos. This is an important starting point in the story for the ancient Israelites. Water held diverse uh, understandings from the source of life to a place of danger to a means of cleansing and renewal. In the first creation story, God created space between the waters where the earth could flourish. If we were to read further on into the second story of creation in Genesis 2, we would hear that God began with barren land and used water as a source of life and renewal for the rest of creation. In both of these stories, whether it's through the separating waters from the land or by turning the chaos of, wa chaos of water into a source of, of vibrancy and vitality, God demonstrates God's divine authority to create. Create all things. Later on in, in Genesis, we hear that story of the flood account that I referenced earlier. God commands the waters to fill the earth from above and below, sweeping away all that is evil, temporarily restoring the earth to its pre-creation state. Think about that. As the waters receded, God's relationship with creation was reborn through a covenant never to destroy or flood again, but to walk along, alongside life and be in this life as messy as it may get. Chaos and order, death and rebirth, these themes from the Hebrew scriptures are also primary through our gospel stories. Now, I took a, a moment to walk around our sanctuary this morning before um, uh, anybody else arrived. I got here early to set up all of this stuff. Sorry, Mary, it now looks like a garage sale. She had a very simple water and soil, and I've added fishing poles and boogie boards and wakeboards and wetsuits. Um, if you are interested in any of these things, everything has a, a price. But I took time walking around, and, and you know, I was looking specifically for, for this um, uh, stained glass window. Of course, we heard this story, right? Jesus being baptized in the Jordan. There is John, and there is Jesus. And I knew, okay, yes, we've got water in the stained glass windows. And then I started looking further, and I started noticing water in other ones as well. So for instance, this one where Jesus is healing the sick. Do you see the ocean in the background? Or maybe that's the Sea of Galilee, right? This amazing, miraculous thing that's happening at the water's edge. And then I looked over here, and I saw the, the, the story of, of the prodigal son coming back to the open arms of the father. And what else? What is in the background? The sea again. Reconciliation and love at the water's edge once again. And I think I saw... oh. Uh, Jesus calling his fishermen, the fishermen, out of the sea. You are now going to be not fishers of fish, but fishers of men and women. So much. As a matter of fact, I even look deep, more deeply, and, and there's the story of Paul all the way back there. See, you guys want to do a tour of our sanctuary, because you may not be able to see it where you sit. But on the left panel from, from, from this amazing conversion experience in Paul is is a depiction of, of Paul being on a boat, taking the gospel good news from one place to the other across the seas. Then I just looked up and I saw the, the great uh, stained glass window that, is, that I get to view all the time and you all only see when you leave, Jesus. And I see the clouds in the background and I can imagine that moment of, of creation separating of the skies and the waters. It's all around us. It's, it's awesome. 
Water is in the air that we breathe. Water is in us and around us. Jesus began his ministry by stepping into that Jordan River. Despite John protesting it, saying, no, 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 I'm the one who needs to be baptized. I, I'm not the one to baptize you. Jesus says, no, this is, this is for you to do for me. When he came up from the waters, the heavens opened and, and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. There's a dove right there in the stained glass. See, it's all around us. And we might read this event as God's entrance into the human experience in a, in a flesh way, in a tangible way. Jesus, through his experience in the water, is both diving into the chaos of this messy thing that we call life in humanity, as well as demonstrating the cleansing of the soul that comes through God's grace in the waters of baptism. Where in Genesis, God brought order to water, separating the seas from the land, Jesus insists on entering into the waters himself. Water is in the stories of the beginning, in the stories of creation, it's in the stories of salvation, in the stories of repentance and forgiveness and redemption. It's a huge story, not only of the past, but our present and significant to our future. As a matter of fact, it was just this Friday that water became the entry point for a conversation between myself and somebody I had just met about repentance, forgiveness, redemption, and rebirth. It was on Friday that um, the Children's Center, it was supposed to be us who hosted it, but it turned out that we provided tacos and the families got together on the um, fireside to enjoy fellowship together after, after a long week of sending their kids to uh, uh, the Children's Center. Families gathered together, kids played on the playground and ran around out on, our, uh, on, the, on the grass there uh, as parents gathered together and ate tacos. Well, I went over to um, write a check. That's what I do sometimes. For the taco guy. The taco guy learned that I was the pastor. And he started to cry. <laughs> do, what did I do? <laughs> he was setting up at a church. And he had something inside of him that he wanted to change. And he thought, Pastor, I'd like to talk to you about baptism. He couldn't find the word. He said it in Spanish, but I knew what he was talking about. And we started talking about baptism and waters. And he says, well, I've, I've been down the wrong path, and I, I continue to find myself down the wrong path. I really would like to have a conversation about changing that path and changing my life. And he pointed to his partner. He says, he really helps me out. My family does not. They actually lead me in the wrong way. So what does that look like to have baptism, not with my family, but just my friends? And we talked about the path that he had been on and the path that he wants to be on. And, and I had mentioned, I said, you know, I've always visualized Jesus has, has a, uh, or God has a path that God wants us to be on, God's will for us, God's direction for us, all of us. And it's a very wide path. I know the scriptures say it's a narrow path, but I imagine it's wide because God wants everybody on it. If everybody was on it, it would feel narrow. That's the way I kind of deal with that in my head. And, you know, we, we go along that trail, and, and yet we see little, little places that, that we wander off on. And we start to kind of forget about this thing that is God's will and, and really get directed by our own will. And sometimes that brings joy and fun, and, and other times it might lead us to a place that, that is harmful for ourselves or for the people around us. And I always love the vision that, that none of those trails have a dead end, that God constantly lays another pathway that brings us back and closer to that main trail that God wants us to be on. And it must have been because I was preparing this sermon, I said, and then I just imagine that God's grace is like this, this gigantic river that's flowing. And once you step into the waters and allow yourself to submerge deeper and deeper and deeper, you can do nothing but get taken away by God's grace for everyone. 
And the more and more we get into the middle of that river, the harder and harder it is to get to the sides and get away from it because it's just so compelling to be in God's love all the time. And, and he says, that's what I want. <clears throat> so I got his, <clears throat> excuse me, got his phone number and we're meeting this week. So you may meet him. But he loved this image of, of the waters because he knows them. He knows swimming, he knows being in the ocean, and he knows what it feels like to be surrounded in something that's, that's refreshing and life-giving and cleansing. And when we can put it in those terms, we then can explain what God's love is like. And then we can, can encourage other people to, to say, just as he did, I want to be a part of that. That's what I want my life to look like and feel like. Surrounded in love, unconditional love, grace and peace redemption and reconciliation. I love being in the water. I don't get in it enough. And I know I've said it a thousand times already. I've only been here for three years and I probably shared this story half a dozen, if not a dozen times, but I keep on going back to when we entered into this pandemic, you had a choice. Gain a bunch of weight. <laughs> Maybe get into things that you shouldn't get into or make a choice to maybe lose a little bit of weight and do things that are life-giving. I've mentioned yoga was one of the things. Thank you, Kelly. Another one was surfing. Cody and a couple other uh, friends of ours said, hey, well, let's just get in the water. Uh, to be honest with you, we pre-recorded worship, right, on Thursdays. So when 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 you guys were all preparing to watch worship on Sunday. Sometimes I was in the ocean. <laughs> I'd get back in time so I could watch worship, right? Yes, Kelly would agree with that. But it was, it was life-giving and cleansing and, 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 and felt like rebirth again. I haven't been surfing in a while. I need to, especially after this sermon. I think of my favorite bodies of water, the places I've been, and a lot of them are because of this church, Lake Powell or the river or days at the beach at, at La Jolla Shores or getting in the, in the water at Tourmaline. People that I don't even know took me in a car and got me there. And I couldn't even name all of the names of the people who, who got me to the riverside. And so many conversations of faith happen there. So many experiences of deepening our relationship with one another and with God happened in the waters. What a gift. So I want you to take a moment. Think of your favorite body of water or your favorite activity in the water or maybe your favorite moment in the water. I know that I turned that into a trilogy of questions. Favorite body of water, favorite thing to do, or favorite moment in the waters. And I just would love to hear some of those. Oh, immediately, Renell. Scuba diving, Scuba diving in the Atlantic. Cold. You needed one of these. No. Got the Gulf Stream. Got the Gulf Stream. See, here's a, somebody from the South that knows that. I, just, I think Atlantic, I think New York, and cold and windy. Got it. Others. Which? Crater Lake. Crater Lake. Haven't been in it, but just the beauty of it. Yes, being beside it. Others? <clears throat> Snorkeling in Tahiti. Snorkeling. Yes, this could be a bragging moment. <laughs> Snorkeling in Tahiti. Yes. Wow, imagine the life and color that was visible. Uh, Eric, and then I'll come back to you, Nancy. Kayaking. Kayaking. Yes, you like to go kayaking on a weekly basis? <laughs> wishes weekly basis maybe monthly with fingers crossed Nancy floating in inner tubes with family with your sisters in the waves in Hawaii specifically oh see now the, way, the hands are coming up Could, yes, this is something that us Southern Californians do not do very much. Canoeing in rivers, Kerr and the Current River. Fantastic. Well known in the Midwest. I'll have to look it up on a map. Yes. 
Kay oh, <laughs> kayaking in the bioluminescent waters of Puerto Rico. Wonderful. Yes, okay. I'm going to do focus on this side, like three or four. We have kayaks for sale. <laughs> oh, you have kayaks for Add it to my gar garage sale here. <laughs> I'll hook you up with Eric. Rafting uh, through the Grand Canyon. Ah, uh, rafting through the Grand Canyon. Karen. River trips, both as a youth and a leader, we've been on those river trips together, which is awesome. Deepening relationships, lifelong relationships. Melissa. Um, white water rafting, say it. The dangers of the water. <laughs> Dro taking 20 foot drops over, over um, uh, waterfalls um, in the river. That's awesome. Brent. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. That was during the pandemic time. We weren't meeting, and here comes this guy in the water with he, you had a, a, a GoPro. So you have video of it. And I was like, who is this guy? And that was really the first time I kind of really met you, Brent, was in the water in the ocean. That's right. So awesome. You know, I lift all of this up because we recognize, I mean, it brings smiles to our faces and, and, and it reminds us of, of what a gift it is. You know, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. 60% of our bodies are made up of water. We are surrounded by it. We are in it. We are made of it. Should we not care for it? It's all around us. It reminds us of our relationship with God and who God is, who surrounds us and, 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 and is the air that we breathe and is a part of our, our making, our flesh, our being. Would not God want us to take care of God? Because God is a part of our creation. We have this experience of, of participating with the Creek to Bay cleanup um, annually, and, and I give thanks for Diana and Megan who participated this year in that. It's a reminder that, that the litter that we, we create here in La Mesa or, or wherever it is in East County makes its way all the way out to the oceans. Um, who was it that was wearing the, Nancy was wearing the turtle um, uh, uh, necklace today? And I said, oh, that's the right necklace to be wearing today. Uh, I, I think of, of the ocean creatures that receive some of our pollution all the way from here, all the way down there. Uh, as we participate in that, we recognize that the greatest piece of litter are those little plastic, it's not cigarette butts anymore, although there are a lot of those, but those little plastic um, uh, things that, that you put your straws in that, that are a part of, of um, you know, like box juices. You know, you tear the, tear the straw off and, and then you take the plastic off of the straw and that just, even with great intention, trying to put that in a trash can on a windy day, it's impossible. That is the thing that has picked up the most on the beaches, at least from my experience in the past. We participate in that, imagine that, turning into to microplastics that then get, get eaten or, or breathed into by turtles and by fish that then get picked up by the birds, that then is a part of our own food stream. It comes back to us. Can we not be mindful of caring for God's creation? I can go on and on. Oh my gosh, the time has gotten by. I'll get here. There is a scripture, Matthew 10, it says this, we are intimately linked in this harvest work together. Anyone who accepts what you do accepts me, the one who sent you. Anyone who accepts what I do accepts my Father who sent me. Accepting a messenger of God is, a good, is as good as being God's messenger. Accept someone's help is a, as good as giving someone help. This is a large work I've called you into, but don't be overwhelmed by it. It's best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. You won't lose out on a thing. We can do little things that care for God and for one another in the ways that we are mindful of all that is created, including our waters. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I brought something here, uh, Jack pointed it out, and, and I encourage you to look it up. This is called a flume. 
And I was introduced to it by our neighbor uh, because we had a leaky faucet while we were, or an irrigation thing that happened while we were away on a camping trip. That's the worst phone call to get. Hey, there's water running down the street from your house <laughs> while you're not there. This little device is $125 off of the internet, but if you register it then with your water um, uh, provider, for us it was Helix Water, they gave me a full rebate, so it is free. And all you do is strap it around your water meter, and it connects, if you have internet, that's a key piece though, to this, and it tells me on my phone how much water I am using each day and when I'm using it, minute by minute. I can see when a toilet is flushed at my house. <laughs> but I can also see when there's water running when we don't want it to run. And I can also see how many gallons of water it takes to fill a bathtub versus taking a shower or washing dishes in the dishwasher rather than washing them in the sink. It changes our behavior and reminds us, especially here in Southern California, of our needs to preserve our water, to care for it, and to reduce our water usage, right? This is one small thing, and if you would like help, I'll help you with it. It's not hard. It takes five minutes to set up. It is one little thing that I have found can help our family care for the earth. The good news is the water that makes up a majority of our body, the water that covers the majority of the earth, it all blesses us in every gulp and every splash and every drop. The waters that are all around us, within us, is also God's presence and blessing. Think of it. Every second we carry the holy waters of baptism in us because all of the waters are wholly created. By God. We just need to care for it. So your homework this week. Pay attention to how much water you use. Maybe look into the flume. But enjoy being by the waters. Taking your shoes off once again. Place your feet in the water, where it's your, whether it's a bathtub, a hot tub, or a pool, or the ocean. And just feel that water surrounding your feet, your legs, maybe your whole body, and consider that God's love surrounding you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. There was so much more. I'm so sorry. I realize I just could go on and on and on. As we prepare to close with our um, closing hymn, I just want to lift up a few things uh, uh, that our church is doing that we can stay connected and, and um, care for one another. Uh, this Wednesday at 1 o'clock, the United Women in Faith are meeting. Uh, they are going to have some special guests share their experience, both of joy and challenge, in immigrating to the United States and being immigrants in the United States. And so you definitely all are welcome to be there and to listen to these testimonies. So we encourage you. And then on Thursday, our Caring Ministry team is providing a service of global prayer right here at 5.30, Thursday at 5.30. We encourage you to come. There's going to be a prayer for each of our continents um, and, and some songs interspersed. It's just a time of prayer. It's simple, nothing fancy, just prayer. And so we want you to be a part of that. Ooh, they're all in their places. So let us uh, stand together. I felt this was an appropriate closing hymn. Damn. Shall we gather at the river? <laughs> hymn number 723.
I uh, share this benediction written by Jan Richardson, uh, I want to let you know that our prelude is unique and different. Uh, Next Sunday, after church, we will have a suite for Mother Goose. This would be a great opportunity to just return yourself to wonderful Mother Goose rhymes and poems. If you have family or friends, especially with little ones, uh, it's going to be organ and narration. Uh, You're going to get a taste of that through The Fiddler for our postlude, just so you can have a taste of it to encourage you to come back uh, next Sunday, not only for worship, but for the organ concert after worship. So know that it's a unique and different postlude. Hear now this uh, benediction. May your life be a river. May you flow with the purpose of the one who created and called you, who directs your course and turns you ever toward home. May your way shimmer with the light of Christ who goes with you, who bears you up, who calls you by name. May you move with the grace of the Spirit who brooded over the face of the waters at the beginning and who will gather you in at the end. Let us go forth in the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so this is just a little taste of um, what you will see next week and hear. Paul, of course, will be playing the organ, and I will be narrating A Suite for Mother Goose. Um, It's only about 15 minutes or so, so just come and have fun. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Oh, hickory dickory six and seven, ala bone crack a bone ten and eleven, spin spun muscadun, twiddle um twaddle um twenty one. Jackie, come and give me thy fiddle, if ever thou mean to thrive. Nay, I'll not give my fiddle to any man alive. If I should give my fiddle, they'll think that I've gone mad. For many a joyous day, my fiddle and I have had. Oh, hickory dickory six and seven, ala bone crack a bone ten and eleven, spin spun muscadun, twiddle em twaddle em twenty one. Now old King Cole was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. He called for his pipe, and he called for his bowl, and he called for his fiddlers three. Oh, hickory dickory six and seven, ala bone crack a bone ten and eleven, spin spun muscadun, twiddle em twaddle em twenty one. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. The dish ran away with the spoon. The dish ran away with the spoon. There they go. Goodbye, dish. Goodbye, spoon. Have a lovely time.